Welcome to the Faculty of Humanities and Education at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus. Our faculty, with its diverse attributes, such as an aesthetically pleasing physical environment, state-of-the-art classrooms, free Wi-Fi connection, and highly qualified and competent lecturers, is the perfect place to realize or expand your academic, social, and professional potential. This is where you use your imagination, question society, the world, and critique the answers you discover through critical thinking. I'm Wibinta Warbako, the Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Education. This is a faculty that is rebranding and renewing itself and will prepare you not only for the intellectualism that you find in the faculty, but also for the work skills that we are going to give you in order to succeed in a globalized world. The of Humanities and Education boasts eight departments, History and Archaeology, the Institute of Caribbean Studies, Language, Linguistics and Philosophy, Library and Information Studies, Modern Languages and Literatures, Literatures in English, the Caribbean School of Media and Communication, and the School of Education. Here we prepare persons with human skills to engage society, um, and especially for my area, which is um, education. I am director of the School of Education. In the school, we train both teachers for the school system and also administrators, so we um, prepare principals and um, administrators at the other level, uh, vice principals, those who administer programs. The Faculty of Humanities and Education is a great choice for an undergraduate degree. There are so many reasons actually, I, I don't even know if I can tell you all of them. One is, is that we have a wide variety and array of exciting programs from literatures and English to linguistics to philosophy to cultural studies to journalism. There, there's a broad choice to meet many needs. Our small classes, we, we operate with a system where we have large lectures and then small tutorial groups. Those small tutorial groups are really essential in terms of students gaining certain skills, like um, developing uh, relationships with their peers, uh, learning how to make presentations, a close interaction with their tutors and lecturers, developing confidence. It's, it's really a great place to do an undergraduate degree. Literatures in English is actually home to three undergraduate programs. Um, there's a liberal studies program, there's a literatures in English degree which we have had for many decades and just recently we introduced a BA in film studies. The BA in film studies is our newest degree program and it's really exciting. Recently my students taking the course popular film went to Parade Gardens in Kingston um, for a walking tour of that community. And the reason why we did that was because we're studying a film called Get a Life, which depicts life in a garrison constituency. And we went down to Parade Gardens to talk to people in the area to find out what it was like for them being in such a volatile community. Well, the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy enables you to choose careers quite easily in the future. For example, in linguistics, you have the option of doing translation, 
um, you have the option of getting into criminology via our forensic linguistics courses. Take a look at our offerings. I'm sure you will like what you see. Each department utilizes information communication technologies to prepare students to become knowledge workers. This is the animation lab at Carimac, where we have industry standard equipment in animation. Here at Carimac, we offer undergraduate degree programs in animation, film production, journalism, integrated marketing communication, as well as digital media production. In our curriculum, we ensure that the content keeps up with the latest trends in media and communication so that our students can get degrees that are relevant to their careers. Studying within the Faculty of Humanities and Education, our students at Caramac are able to combine their majors with other areas within the faculty. They're able to do minors in, in, in cultural studies, in modern languages, foreign languages, in history, in language, linguistics and philosophy, and so on. And so the student graduating from the Faculty of Humanities and Education is able to get a well-rounded degree, ensuring that they're quite prepared for their careers. Hi, I'm Ronaldo Marcelet, a final year animation student here at Caramac. My experience at Caramac has been a fun one. The work is difficult, but it's the same kind of work that we'll be doing in the industry. Our lecturers have come directly from the industry to teach us, sharing all their years of knowledge and experience and bringing it towards us. They bring something very special and unique that a hands-on craft that we can then take and build on so that we can develop into the best persons that we can be. Hi, my name is Geraldine Renault and I'm a student in the Department of Library and Information Studies in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. What this department does is to create information professionals. These skills are transferable to your everyday life. I must also add, as a student from Belize, the lecturers not only cater to Jamaican students, but also regional and international students. So why choose the Faculty of Humanities and Education? Because it's simply the best, better than all the rest. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to the first ever Faculty of Humanities and Education Roadshow. Now, why is it a roadshow? What are we here to do? We are here to ensure that you learn quite a bit about our programs, about our team, about our Faculty of Humanities and Education family. We are a vibrant space. We are full of life. We're full of multidisciplinary programs. And we have programs to suit your every interest and your every desire. We are pandemic proof. We provide careers in this pre-post pandemic era. I am Dr. Nicole Plummer, Associate Dean for the Faculty of Humanities and Education. And I will be your moderator for tonight's event. So welcome. I am so pleased to have you and I'm so glad you're here. In fact, we all are. So the Faculty of Humanities and Education enjoys a long tradition of excellence. Excellence in teaching, excellence in research. We have pioneering research in all areas. Our students, our staff, they're the heartbeat of the University of the West Indies and the heartbeat of our region. Our departments include, and you will hear from each department, the Caribbean School of Media and Communication, the Department of History and Archaeology, the Institute of Caribbean Studies, the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy, the Department of Library and Information Studies, the Department of Literatures in English, the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures, the School of Education, and St. Michael's Theological College, as well as United Theological College. So, 
stay tuned. We're going to tell you all the different careers, careers that make you famous, careers suitable for extroverts, careers that you find on TV, from scandal and crisis managers, to music score composers, to teachers and education consultants, to professors and principals, insurance adjusters and bankers, translators, party planner, event manager, entertainment manager, entertainment consultant, songwriter, creative director. I mean, I'm making myself breathless trying to tell you all the different things you can be and you can do. We are for everyone. We are the departments for everyone. And if it is that you are an introvert, so you don't like to leave worse in this pandemic era, well, check out online opportunities to make money. So this, for example, is from Fiverr. You can do DMP and do graphic design, music and performance studies, and go right into music and audio, from programming and tech, to digital marketing, to business to lifestyle. Everything is available in our faculty, and you can do them by yourself, setting up as a consultant on Fiverr and Upwork. So check them out in your own time. You see, with a degree from the Faculty of Humanities and Education, there's almost nothing you can't do. In other words, I'm saying you can do everything. Maybe not be a doctor, but then you could do an undergraduate program with us and move on to the medicine. Now, this is our contact information, because I know this is really what you want, right? How do you reach us? How do you follow us? Well, we're available on email. You can check out our website. Our website has a live chat. We have an Instagram page, very popping, very fun. So you can always reach out to us on Instagram at humanities underscore education underscore Mona. You can reach out to us on WhatsApp, WhatsApp phone call, WhatsApp text message on 876-484-1885. Applications are open in the faculty and you will hear from Mrs. Bolero Houghton, more about admissions and financing your education. You also have my email address. So you have, I am available at Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E dot plumber 02 at uimona.edu.jm. Now, after me, we have Mrs. Bolero Houghton who will be presenting, followed by Dr. Tasheen Haynes Brown of the School of Education. We have Miss Antonisha Henry, who is presenting from the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures, Dr. Rachelle Mosleywood from the Department of Literatures in English, Mr. Mark Jeffrey Deans from the Department of Library and Information Studies. We have Miss Tayshawn Williams, forgive me, who will be providing not just entertainment, but testimonial. We'll also hear from Miss Kimaja Connell from the Department of language, linguistics, and philosophy. We have Dr. Hen Enrique Okenvi from the Department of History and Archaeology. We'll hear from Mr. Alex Reed, his experience as a student. This will be followed by Dr. Deborah Hickling Gordon, who will present on the Institute of Caribbean Studies. Mr. Stefan Campbell, who will present on Carmack. And we will have Ms. Caroline Chambers, who will present on the St. Michael's Theological College. Stay tuned, take notes, and make note of the contact information. We hope to see you soon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marjorie Bolero Houghton, and I'm very pleased to be here this afternoon. Welcome again. And I want to say congratulations to those of you who have sat and passed your CAPE or CSEC exams. I know some of you are very excited, but I know some of you are a bit disappointed, but don't be too hard on yourselves. This is a very difficult time, and none of us here would have gone through what you went through. So. Congratulations again, and you have time to make up if you didn't do as you thought. 
No, the University of the West Indies. Is, um, we're pleased to be here to share with you about our UE. And um, we are number one, ranked number one in the Caribbean. And we're also top in Latin America and the Caribbean. And in the world, we are ranked among the top 4% best universities in the world. So the UWI is a world ranking institution. Now, how do you get to the University of the West Indies? Simply five subjects, if you want to come in as a full-time student, five subjects, including two double units, and that will take you three years for the most part. And then if you want to come in as a part-time student for four year studies, you would have five CSEC, five or more CSEC. Of course, English language is compulsory. And for the humanities and education and some of the other programs too, you need mathematics because the program that you might want to do, let's say you wanted to do computer or, or uh, mathematics in the humanities from the humanities faculty, then you would need mathematics. You can come in with an associate degree as well, or if you have done an IB, then you're also welcome. Now, what we want to say to you at this time, you can still apply. I know some of you got your CAPE or your CSEC, and we have had calls wanting to find out if persons can come in at this time. Yes, you can apply, particularly to the Faculty of Humanities and Education, um, but a few others, and the faculty is ready to welcome you. They are going to put everything in place so that even though you might have to pay a little catch up, they have things ready for you. And so we invite you to apply to the UWI. Here's our application at www.mona.uwi slash apply. You can go there and you apply. You scan your documents and scan and upload once you have gotten them certified. If you can't find anybody to certify them, although we are encouraging, you know, stay at home. Um, you can take them to UWI if you can't to the admissions and they will do the necessary um, scanning for you. If you're married, um, not for the high school students, then you can also take your marriage certificate. If you're adopted, the same thing, then you submit your application. Now, what we are saying is that if you are going to come in now, we are encouraging you to apply between now and the 30th of September. We don't want you to stay too long to get in. So apply now. If you apply now after the show, um, then, you know, you'll soon be getting a response from us and we are giving you our contact so that you can get. So what do you do? I am not ready. My parents don't have enough money. Well, the university has taken thought to that. And in short, the university is a very reasonable institution. For the past four years, we have not increased our, our fees to our students. And this year, we haven't increased it either. But we realize that persons are having challenges. And we don't want you to stay home not doing anything and your parents don't know what to do with you. So we are inviting you to apply to the university. And once you have applied and you can pay 15% of the tuition and the miscellaneous fees, then we will allow you to pay by monthly um, prearranged okay, payments. Now, if you see here, we have the fees starting at 286,897. Now there's nowhere in the world you're going to get a world-class university with this very reasonable price uh, degree. If you are studying part-time, then you will pay per course because you're going to be um, doing less courses than the full-time persons. So you pay your 15% of the tuition and then you have your, your miscellaneous fees and the miscellaneous include a medical and then you pay 650 for an, uh, your ID. Now here are the times that we have here for you. We'd allow you to pay the 31st. For you, you'd be able to pay the 31st of October, November, December. Now, some of you might not want to apply just now, although we are encouraging you to apply. But if you want to start in January, you could also start in January. And for that, you would apply next month for January. But 
we are suggesting that you know if you know if you're not ready to stay home then apply now faculty as i said is waiting for you here we are giving your whatsapp and our direct lines and recruiting and if you have any questions we are encouraging you to call us and then we'd be willing to share with you so apply now and we will respond quickly because the faculties, everybody here is from that faculty and they are willing and ready for you to come in to start studying. Thank you very much. And we'd love to see you at the UWI Mona. All right. Thank you so much, Mrs. Houghton. I'm sorry, if I'm a student listening, I would have learned quite a bit about how to finance my program, how to enter, the process of administration. I find that your slide was extremely informative. Now we have another very informative presentation coming up and guess what? This is by someone who trains your teachers. So we have Dr. Tashane Haynes Brown from the School of Education who will be presenting on undergraduate and graduate programs. Dr. Haynes Brown, on to you. Thank you, Nicole. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Tashane Haynes-Brown and I'm gonna be talking about choosing a career in teaching. So we know that every teacher devotes his or her life to education for reasons as individual to them as any other part of their identity. And normally it isn't the money nor the two month summer vacation. The reasons for becoming a teacher are often deeper than that. Teaching is one of the most direct ways to make an impact. And if you are driven by the desire to help those around you, being a teacher is one option you should consider. Now, maybe an amazing teacher changed your life when you were younger and you want to share that passion with a new generation. Many people cite their favorite teacher as a source of inspiration in their decisions to pursue a career in education. So to show that those teachers would have made a significant mark on your life. Becoming a teacher is one way to show that. Teaching is not just a profession, as you know. Of course, it is a mission, and teachers are neighbors. In all careers, have been molded by teachers, and so teachers shape the next generation. And it is definitely not an exaggeration to say that great teachers can change a student's life. There are an endless amount of great teacher stories that attest to the benefits of a strong relationship between a teacher and his or her students. It is not always easy to change a student's life, but it is very possible. The destiny of our nation, Jamaica, is going to be shaped in her classroom. Students who are inspired by their teachers will accomplish amazing things. One teacher can shape a child, one child can shape the world. Now, it is not surprising that teachers often rise to the ranks of greatness in our society. One such example would be Professor Errol Miller, who started out with a diploma in education from the School of Education, followed by a Master's of Arts and a PhD. All of those things were done right here with us at the School of Education, Yui Mona. And you can, as you can see from his track in his career, he started out as a science teacher at Excelsior High, moved on to becoming a lecturer, then a principal, then a professor at the SOE, to permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education, and even an independent senator at one point in the Jamaican parliament. So Professor Miller is a good example of how a career in teaching can lead you to accomplish great things. Another perk of becoming a teacher is that there are opportunities to travel the world. There are currently so many programs out there for teachers. You have programs in the UK, such as the Teacher Exchange Program. In the United States, there's the Teach Away Program. If you wanna travel as far as Australia, there's also the Aussie Educator Program. Now that I think I've wet your appetite a little bit to consider a career in education, let's take a look at our programs in the SOE. 
So there are three options for pursuing a career in teaching. We have our B.Ed. 90 credit program, and this is a three-year Bachelor of Ed program for those applicants who are high school graduates with advanced level certifications such as CAPE. We have the B.Ed. 66 credit program, which is a two-year Bachelor of Education program for those applicants who wish to upgrade their teacher's college diploma to a B.Ed. We also have a postgraduate diploma in education for those persons who have a first degree in one of the options that we offer here at the School of Education. Let's take a look at our career choices. So we offer degrees, Bachelor of Education degrees in areas such as information technology, computer studies, language education, literacy studies, mathematics education, science ed, social studies and geography, history education, and educational administration. So these are the options available to you. And many of the careers that fall under the overarching umbrella of education are listed here. Some of them you can consider becoming a subject teacher in any of those areas we just mentioned. You can consider becoming an educational administrator, an education officer. You can also consider being a training specialist in mathematics or literacy. You can consider becoming an educational measurement specialist. And you could also consider careers in social work, becoming a course or a content writer, a trainer in the private sector, a consultant, or a writer of textbooks. And one of the things that I love about careers in teaching is that you can have multiple streams of income. So because you're a teacher of science, for example, you can also write textbooks in science while teaching, and you could still train in the private sector. So teachers have many options available to them in this career. Now, I know you are curious about the cost. Mrs. Bolero Horton already pointed out the cost for these programs. And so I just want to mention that if you are planning to come into our programs this year, there are scholarships and bursaries available. We have, you may consider contacting the Office of Student Financing. The Ministry of Education currently has offers for science and mathematics educators to grant to access funds to go to university. There are also general scholarships for other subject areas offered at the Ministry of Education. Consider also seeking out those foundations that offer scholarships. One such would be the Sajikor Foundation. We also have available grants for children of public sector workers and many more. Now, if you are interested in joining us at the School of Education and to learn more about these fees, bursaries and scholarships as you join, consider contacting us through one of our various options available. So we're looking out for your call. You can contact us like via WhatsApp, cell phone, landline, or send us an email at soeue.undergrad at gmail.com. Looking out to hear from you guys. Thank you for having me. Bye. If I wasn't a teacher already, I think I'd want to be a teacher. Thank you for letting me want to be a teacher again, Dr. Haynes Brown. I think you have persuaded me. Maybe instead of teaching university students, I need to start going into the high schools and the primary schools. I, that is what, that's the effect you had on me. And I'm sure that's the effect you have on everyone who listened. All right. So up next, we have. Uh, Miss Antonisha Henry from the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures. Hola, buenas tardes, bonjour, bonsoir, konnichiwa. Hello, everybody. I'm from the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the offerings in our department. I am currently sharing with you our departmental webpage. So if you visit, just type in mona.edu.uwi.edu slash modlang. I'm sharing with you now. 
Now, for programs that we offer from the Department of Modern Languages, we have a BA in Spanish, a BA in French, or you could do a major with a BA in French and Spanish. Along with along with the minor Chinese, you could do a BA in French, you could do a is also something we offer the modern languages. After you have completed either the three years full-time or four years part-time, and if you happen to fall so much in love with literature, for example, then you could pursue a master or PhD in our department. Interested from you hear about languages, you're wondering, thinking about what interchange, what exchange programs it is that we have. And there are a variety of those study abroad programs. So depending on, the, on your language of interest, if you study Chinese, for example, there are eight to 12 scholarships for Jamaican nationals each year to visit China. And that all of these programs, the Chinese scholarships are all for a year, right? And then for French students, we have a variety of universities with which the University of the West Indies partners in order to offer you in order to offer you exchange programs, scholarships, opportunities to visit these French speaking countries. So you could visit France itself. We have French Guyana, and we also have relations with Haiti. But Japanese, well, there is a JET program with Japan, and there are also other Jap Japanese scholarship programs. For Spanish, we have an exchange with Colombia, that one you could pursue at the end of your program or while you are studying for a year also. And there is a smaller program where you could visit Colombia for four weeks during a semester. So if it is that you're doing a course in the department and you want to develop your oral, written, whatever skills, you'd want to have an experience of an immersion, then you would go ahead and sign up for that program to Colombia. We also have exchange with Costa Rica and then with herself. So again, guys, I'm sure that you're wondering about what careers it, there are from studying in the modern languages. Now, with our degree programs, it offers you a wide variety of, of, of involvement. So you can work in other fields. You could be strictly a language specialist. You could become a translator, an educational consultant. You could be a teacher. So even if you did a degree in the modern languages, in French, Spanish, Chinese, any of those we offer, and then later you'd want to become a teacher, then that gives you also an opportunity to do so. You could also work in the diplomatic field. So studying the languages and then you continue with your progress in diplomatic careers and so on. We also have marketing executives working in languages. And just to point out to you, especially in this current pandemic, I know of many of my colleagues which are enjoying multiple incomes at this time without even leaving the comfort of their home because they have been able to participate in all of these fields. If you would like further information from us, 
we are present on Facebook. We have a YouTube channel. If you type in Modern Languages UE Mona, you'd find us. We're on Twitter and we're also on Instagram. And for quicker response, you may contact us via WhatsApp at 772-7360. So our WhatsApp number is 772-7360. So thank you guys for having me. Thank you for listening. Gracias, au revoir, merci, ciao, bye, and hope to see you soon or hear from you soon here at Modern Languages UE Mona. All right, thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Yes, and I suppose somebody out there is saying de nada. Yeah, um, my Spanish is not as good as it used to be. But I am sure that if I did a major or a minor in Spanish and even better Spanish and French, and oh my goodness, don't forget your Asian languages minor. I mean, who can do business these days without having some kind of Asian background, right? Our students are very well qualified in the area of business should they decide to come to the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures. You have to know more than English these days to do business. So I'm encouraging all business students, all management students, come and learn a foreign language. In fact, double majors are possible. Now we have to tell us more about writing about ourselves, understanding ourselves, understanding the record of what makes us who we are, how to put ourselves on film. We have with us the head of the Department of Literatures and English, the, the famous, the wonderful, Dr. Rachel Mosley-Wood. Hi, Nicole, and thank you. And um, I'm not so doing so wonderfully, um, trying to share my screen. Um, so just trying to do that, sorry. Um, just let me begin to tell you a little about my department. Um, as I try to bring up um, the, the screen. I hope you're seeing it. Right. Okay, so the Department of Literatures in English, we're one of the departments in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. Uh, let me tell you a little about our programs. Now, we're called the Department of Literatures in English, but we really have four undergraduate programs, um, three of which are interdisciplinary programs. And I'll tell you what that means in a minute. Uh, here are four programs. Many of you would probably know about Literatures in English, the BA in Literatures in English, which we is one of our longest running programs. Uh, a few years ago, we introduced a BA in Film Studies um, and a few years ago, the BA in Liberal Studies also came to reside in our department. Um, this semester, we also introduced a new program called the BA Writing, Literature and Publishing. So we're literatures in English, but we do uh, have programs in these several different disciplines. So I invite you to go to, onto our website, access it through the university homepage and learn more about what we do. Um, Literatures in English is a program that I, I expect many of you would be interested in and don't believe what you've heard. This is not just for people who want to be teachers. Um, this program will take you to many different careers. Um, if you check the newspaper ads or if you check any ads about jobs or, or um, careers, you will find that they want people who have communication skills and you're going to acquire important communication skills in literatures in English. These are some of the fabulous courses that we have in that program. The graphic novel, never thought that you would do something like that um, in a literature degree. Reggae poetry, that's another exciting program where we look at the, um, we look at reggae dance hall music and discuss and think about the literary uh, qualities of the lyrics. Uh, courses in drama. We have an exciting program in creative writing. Maybe you're not so much interested in studying the works of other writers, but you want to uh, study 
you want, sorry, you want to write your own literature. You want to write your own poetry. Um, and I'm going to tell you a story, very quick story about somebody who did a course, um, a writing course in our um, department. Um, she did a, a writing course of writing for the screen and stage. And in that course, she started to work on a screenplay for a film. Several years later, what's she doing? She's now making that film. That film is now in production. Through our department, she got into a program that allowed her to access funds to start making that film. So our courses and our programs can really take you to places that maybe you never imagined you would go there. Another uh, important and exciting degree program that we have is a BA in Film Studies. If you love cinema, if you love films, this is a program for you. And again, um, exciting courses in reggae films where we look at local films, Jamaican films, films from the diaspora, um, courses in writing for the screen and stage, where if you have an interest as this other student did, you can begin to work on your own um, films, short films. And um, that program, the BA Film Studies, is something that will provide you with skills to work in an array of industries, in advertising, in public relations. It will give you the kinds of critical skills not only in terms of the written word, but the image as well. And you know, we live in a visual world. Uh, publishing is our latest program. And of course that prepares you to work in the publishing industry. Um, but I, I want to say something to you, um, which is that you would know from what's happening today that the most important skill you can perhaps acquire is flexibility. And this is what the programs in the Department of Literatures in English and indeed throughout the faculty offer you. The flexibility not to work in a single job or career or profession, but the flexibility to look at what is available, available to change yourself, to sell your skills and to meet the needs that are current. There is my timer. Thanks for listening. Okay, so Dr. Mosley Wood, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to leave and actually start writing my screenplay. And I'm actually going to hire somebody from the Department of Literatures and English to be my copy editor to ensure that they edit my screenplay. I'm going to become a famous person. You guys watch me become really famous right now. All right, so we have up next a little break from all the talking, right? So we're going to have Mr. Mark Jeffrey Deans introduce our Carmack video. When I say Carmack video, I'm really talking about a movie produced by students in Carmack, but also featuring the work of students in other departments across the faculty. All right, so Mr. Mark Jeffrey Deans, you're on now, followed by our wonderful short film. Thank you, Dr. Plummer. As you are, I am also excited. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this evening, we want to present to you a film production by, done by the students of the Caribbean School of Media and Communication, Caramac. The movie hinges on the cultural and creative industries, which is a rapidly growing sector right around the world. No doubt internationally, Jamaica is unique and fully respected in many cultural and creative spaces. The significance of this splendiferous production therefore reflects the various strengths and facets of the humanities and education. Indeed, film production in general and more specifically in the Caribbean embodies the tenets of creative writing and skills in literature. It supports techniques which reflects the art of directing and producing in media and communication. It requires a sourcing of information in a digital sphere encouraged by libraries and information specialists. Truly, the essence of language, usage, creation, and linguistical prowess is seen. It demands respect for ethics in movie production and representation of knowledge. The appreciation for Caribbean history and context and embodiment of stakeholders who are educated and empowered to perform in the global arena. And so this evening, 
I am pleased to, to witness with you all these elements in action. With no further ado, I present a film production by the students of Carmack. Thank you.
So that is one of the benefits of our program. No, I, I don't know if you noticed the music that just kept pace with the animation, with the film. Now, do you know that in the Faculty of Humanities and Education, we actually have a, a, a um, course called Introduction to Sound Design? I mean, you listen to movies, you, sorry, listen to movies. You watch movies and you listen to the music and you listen to the voice. But you know that there's actually employment around that, not just writing the music, but doing the scores and including the design. So yes, that program, that course is part of a program called Music and Performance Studies. You see in our faculty, when you think of the cultural and creative industries, you have to think about everything related to it, even the things that you take for granted. You see, we're here to ensure that the gaps are filled. So one of the important gaps that comes in film is the whole aspect of who does the research? Where do you get the information? When the movie is done, where do you archive it? Where does it go? That knowledge is so important. So here to tell us all about the careers in archiving, both movies and digital archiving, and everything to do with information research is the wonderful Mr. Mark Jeffrey Deans from the Department of Library and Information Studies. You're on now, Mr. Deans. Thanks again, uh, Nicole, Dr. Flower. Um, you know, uh, Pelicans, welcome. Welcome prospective Pelicans. And I, I just want you to know that I am eagerly uh, anticipating sharing with you the programs of the Department of Library and Information Studies. Um, I, let me share my screen quickly. Uh, I hope you're seeing. Yes. All right, there we go. The whole concept, and, and, I, and I invite you to take off with a career in library and information studies in the Department of Library and Information Studies. The whole concept of taking off is rooted in the fact that a degree from the Department of Library and Information Studies provides you with an opportunity to enter into professions that have truly adapted and have always adapted to the technological demands of, of, of the modern era. And so we invite you to ask yourself the following questions. Do you want to be a web content manager, an information architect, a records manager, knowledge manager, a digital librarian, or would you prefer to be a data curator, an information officer, an internet trainer, corporate librarian, web content strategist? And if your answers to these are yes, then the place to be is the Department of Library and Information Studies. So what are some of the programs we are offer? We have three bachelors um, offered in the Department of Library and Information Studies. We have a Bachelor's of Arts in Librarianship, which is designed to produce graduates who will work in our manager school library, a public library, or a special library in the modern informa information environment. We have a Bachelor's of Arts in Information Studies, which is designed to produce graduates who will work in information units such as museums, galleries, archives, and documentation centers. We have a bachelor's in communication, computer science, geared towards developing careers in information technology, as such as information technology consultants, information systems managers, and database administrators. Our, our, our programs reflect the demands of information, communication, technological knowledge and skills, which is demand by the job market today, and include uh, a various courses that reflects uh, this truth, such as introduction to online searching, information technology for information professionals, introduction, introduction to information systems, information architecture, web accessibility and usability, technology in libraries, database management, design management, access to information in the Caribbean, 
And of course, other courses reflect the depth of the department's offering in the, in, to the information field, such as introduction to information studies, government documents in the Caribbean, archival concepts and practices, literature for children and young adults. The, the, the truth is that it's not hard to enter the Department of Library and Information Studies for those who are coming part-time, minimum five C CSEC, including English A. The secret to our department's success, all our graduates are employed. COVID proof, pandemic proof, and we offer that. So where are these jobs? Where are they employed? Government ministries, hospitals, private companies, libraries, museums, archives, record, records management centers, and even media houses. I, I want you to understand that everyone may not want to study full-time or full-time in the department itself, but of course you may want to do a, a minor, which is really geared towards helping you to develop information management skills, which will help you to effectively complete personal academic and professional tasks. Ladies and gentlemen, just before I go, because uh, this is where you can find information, but I must tell you as well that we do offer um, Masters of Arts degrees. We have the Masters of Arts in Library and Information Studies, which provides graduates of the Bachelors of Arts uh, program with the opportunity to upgrade their qualifications to meet the demands of the modern information environment. We offer a Masters in Library and Information Studies geared towards graduates with a bachelor's degree or other, dis other disciplines with professional education in the field of library and information studies in order to prepare them to effectively manage library and information units and organizations, organizations in different types of environment. We offer masters of arts in archives and records management. The principal focus of this program is to really provide a postgraduate level education in the field of archives administration and records management. And we're not done. Even an MPhil PhD in, in information studies. This is an interdisciplinary domain concerned with the creation, organization management, and uses of information in all its forms and formats. And so, prospective Pelicans, we invite you to come and be a part of a growing family of information specialists by enrolling in any one of our programs here in the Department of Library and Information Studies at the University of the West Indies. If you do have questions, and I suspect that you will, I invite you to contact us uh, via our email, deliasadmin at umona.edu.jm, or call us directly, 927-2944, uh, or on cell, you can even WhatsApp us, WhatsApp us, 536-9966. Invite you as well to visit our website. We are also on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for your time, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Thank you. All right. So, Mr. Deans, I think I'm going, maybe, hmm, I'm wondering. Okay, so movie producer, movie writer, copywriter. No, I can maybe add information specialist, right? I mean, I just don't know what I'm going to do with myself. All right, now to further confuse me by interesting me in another thing that we don't think about in philosophy or maybe linguistics. Up next is Miss Kimaja Connell from the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy. So Miss Connell, please tell me what it is I need to be doing with my life.
All right. So we are going to just skip our presentation around just a little bit. We're going to have uh, Miss Dr. Enrique Equenve from the department. We're going to have Dr. Enrique Equenve from the department of history and archaeology. You know, archaeology was something that I've I'd always wanted to do. A disgusting but true story. Age of six, I was very obsessed with how things decompose, die, and, you know, would watch them. So I would find dead things, bury them, and basically dig them up to see how it is that they decompose over time. No, yes, that's probably forensic archaeology. But I think Dr. Okenvi is going to tell me whether or not it is. Dr. Okenvi. Hello, hello. We're hearing you. You can hear me? Can you see me? No, you can't. Okay, now. All right, hello, good evening, everybody. Um, real pleasure to be here with uh, you. I think what Dr. Plummer didn't tell you is that she wanted to do archaeology, but she actually did history. So actually, one way or another, our department did not, did not uh, lose. Uh, um, my name is Enrico Kenve. I'm the head of the Department of History and Archaeology. And as I just told you, it's a real pleasure to be here with you. Um, these are difficult times, as you know, but, but you're here, right? You, may, you made it this far and you shouldn't stop now. You are protagonist of a historical moment. Your generation is going through a crisis like we have never seen in, in many generations. And I'm the historian here and I can assure you that that's the case. You are being tested, you know that, right? You've been tested in ways that, for example, people from my generation was not tested. But I, I think, I believe actually, that these tests will, will make you stronger. And you have to rest assured uh, that, you know, you will come out of this much stronger. However, I want, you to, I want you to know as well that you are not alone. Our colleagues in the, in the Faculty of Humanities and Education especially in the uh, Department of History and Archaeology. My colleagues and our programs and our courses are, are here to help you, are here to help you overcome uh, these challenges. And how we are planning to do that? We are planning to do that by equipping you with the content and understanding and the skills that you will take, uh, uh, that will take you a long way. What we do in the Department of History and Archaeology is focusing on, as you know, on the past. But we believe that the past is so relevant today and it's extremely relevant also to understand what is coming ahead. Here in the Department of History and Archaeology, we plan to train your mind and help you develop your cognitive abilities and skills. It is your best tool. Your mind is your best tool against the challenges of today and whatever challenges may come in the future. Studying the past will provide you with perspective and understanding of your present, but also it will help, it will provide you with the perspective that you need to envision your future. And not just your future as individuals, but your future as, as a collective, as a society. Because if anything we are learning from this crisis is that we are all going through this crisis and only together, only together will be able to overcome these challenges. I'm now going to share with you um, a slide, um, a PowerPoint presentation, a short one, just to show you uh, 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 some examples of the programs that we offer in the Department of History and Archaeology. The Department of History and Archaeology, our programs and our courses, your future. So these are the main programs that we offer in the Department of, uh, of History and Archaeology. We offer a program in uh, uh, history and journalism, uh, a program in history and archaeology, and a program uh, in history. In addition, we have a new program that has been added to the Department of History and Archaeology. And it's so new in the Department of History and Archaeology that in fact, I have not had time to prepare like a slide for you. But I'm going to talk to you about the three programs that I just mentioned. Starting with our relatively new history and journalism program. This is relatively new because this is just the second year that the program has been around. It's a program that brings together history and journalism, courses from the history department and from, from the Carimac, uh, uh, and from Carimac, journalism courses in particular, right? But just by bringing together the, uh, the, the, this, uh, these two disciplines, it doesn't mean that it's added work. In fact, you still have to do the same type of, the same number of courses that you will do in all the programs. Um, 
this is a program that has been designed to develop, uh, to help you develop the skills from two, from the two disciplines, the kind of research skills that you can gain from, uh, from history, in addition to the communication skills that you can gain from, from journalism. So there is an emphasis in, on research and communication, and this is the kind of, uh, um, it will provide you with type of skills uh, that are very valuable in careers, not just in your journalism, but in many, in many, uh, uh, in, in a great variety of careers in which like uh, communication is crucial. In this day and age, as you, as you can imagine, communication is crucial, but at the same time, the capacity to understand complex problems, which is something that you can also obtain from history, is also very valuable. So I, we think, we believe this is the perfect plan and it's something that you may appreciate. It can provide you opportunities, opportunities that you should be able to take advantage of if you do a program like this. Opportunities, of course, in media, opportunities in education, cultural institutions, creative industries, content creator, communications officer, and so on and so forth. Our second program is a different program, but it's still equally good. It has been in the Department of History and Archaeology for a few more years, and this is the History and Archaeology program. Again, the 90, uh, uh, the 90 credits of the 30 courses in three years. And here in this program, what we combine is history and archaeology, but not just history and archaeology, also all the courses from the University of the West Indies. Um, this is a very uh, uh, hands-on program. You know, if you are into kind of like a work that has more to do, that is, it doesn't only have to do with books and readings and, 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 and analyzing all the type of visual material, this is the kind of work where you can, you know, like use your hands and, and, and you know, dig uh, and, and, and dig the ground and uh, work on the lab and in the lab and stuff like that. This is, this is a fantastic program in this regards. For example, one of the opportunities that you will have is to, to do field school in the summer and do the work that uh, archaeologists do for a few weeks. This is uh, uh, archaeology is an increasingly demanded career, both locally and internationally, and I think you will enjoy this program. And there are, of course, career opportunities opportunities to become an archaeology impact ass uh, assessment, uh, heritage, uh, heritage trust, museums, consultancies, land mapping and survey, very, uh, very, uh, 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 very uh, um, uh, prominent or very uh, uh, in, uh, attractive opportunity to work in, and also environmental preservation, perhaps even more important. Uh, uh, archaeology is your degree if you're interested in careers like this. And of course, we have our traditional history program. And I said traditional history program, but also I should say this is uh, an improved history program, a history program that in the last two years, that two years ago, last year actually, was launched with its, you know, uh, it was re revised, thoroughly revised. And what we have is like uh, the, the good courses and, and, and the good content of always, but also we have new emphasis on skills. This is a program that if you're interested in doing a very flexible program, but also with a focus on, on the past and on the uh, understanding your world, the, how your world came to be, this is the program for you. This is, as I said, it's a flexible program in which like, you can tailor like, your program uh, to your liking, doing courses from all the departments in the Faculty of Humanities and Education or outside of the Faculty of Humanities and Education in addition to uh, your history courses. New and exciting history courses, that's what we have for you. Exciting content about your world, your world, how it came to be. And of course, new emphasis on skills valued by employers. This is one of the things that we pay special attention when we were uh, revising this program. And I believe that this is the type of program that can also take you a long way. You can work in different areas, international aid and development, heritage management, education, cultural advisor, government and non-governmental organizations, and of course, as a researcher and other professions that you can think of. And how will you do that? Well, you will do that, all of this, by taking our courses, your courses, hopefully. Courses in, like, for example, in your first year, you can do Caribbean media history since uh, the 1717, or you can do an uh, introduction to world history, introduction to archaeology. And then when you're on your second year, you have other courses that deal with, for example, the development of North America, right, with a focus also on current issues. You can also do digital history, you know, how to create digital content, uh, uh, with, um, uh, 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 historical content with a, a digital format. And also you have research methods and techniques in archaeology, which is what will give you the hands-on experience that I was talking about. Finally, you also have third year courses such as um, Women and Gender in the History of the English-Speaking Caribbean, course that obviously 
to help you understand like the contributions and the experience of, of, of women and gender relations uh, uh, throughout the history of the Caribbean, of the English speaking Caribbean. Also, of course, a black experience in the United States since 1865, which is a very uh, uh, prominent course right now, very attractive, more students interested in this because of the Black Lives Matter movement. And of course, you can also explore the archaeology of the Caribbean in your third year. So these are some examples of our exciting courses we wish you to take as part of our majors, if you are going to be, do one of our majors, or alternatively, if you're doing a major in a different department of the Faculty of Humanities and Education, we hope that you can do some of these courses as you're free elected. And of course, you can stay, uh, get in contact with us. Here are some of the numbers. The email address, probably the easiest one, is the history at uwimona.edu.jm. Right. You can also find us on and or follow us on, on the social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. Pleasure to be here with you. Have a great night. Right. Dr. Okenwe, thank you for reminding me. Yes, everybody. My BA and my PhD, they are both in history. And incidentally, and this is just something that I'm just sharing with you, the audience, Shh, just a little secret. I, my first job after finishing my BA in history was actually in banking in the United States. Yes. This is the flexibility that we allow in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. You can do anything. And you see me here right now, I am the Associate Dean for Marketing and Outreach. You see, one of the things you find with history you basically get a role and you research that role and you figure out how to do it. Now, one of the things I have to remind you is that for this uh, um, semester, all our courses are online. So if it is that you're in St. Kitts and Nevis, if you are in Guyana, if you're in Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, you can stay home and do our programs with, just from the benefit of your computer. Sit down right in front of, our, of your computer and you are getting to meet the famous, the wonderful Dr. Enrique Kenby, or it could be the brilliant, the wonderfully spoken Mr. Mark Jeffrey Deans. You can meet us all the way from your home. Now up next, we have with us a, the former guild rep for the Faculty of Humanities and Education, one of a young man who is enterprising and wonderful. He is Mr. Alex Reed, and here to tell us about his experience in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. All right, thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Plomo. Uh, wonderful. It's nice to hear good words, you know, uh, about yourself from people, credibility. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for this wonderful program. It's always a pleasure um, to, to <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be back uh, with uh, uh, my fellow humanities um, 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 students and, and, and lecturers. Uh, so we're on a road show. So big up everybody in Mumbai and, and Mandeville. Big up the people from Spanish Town, where I come from. So how, how my story, how my journey to the humanities and education faculty started. So I grew up in Spanish Town and I was exposed to all these historical ruins. I've always been a child or growing up that questioned everything. I questioned, you know, um, God. Uh, I probably should have studied um, philosophy too. I, you know, I wondered what used to happen in these old historical buildings. And so it, it was always an interest. Uh, went to, uh, when I, while I was going to high school, I, I was given the sciences. That was a major mistake. I was, all, I was always interested in history. So, you know, eventually I got back there. <clears throat> uh, so I got to, well, I saw the opportunity to apply to the University of the West Indies, and I did, and I applied um, to the Department of, of History and Archaeology. Big Open Former uh, HOD, Dr. Okenve, taught me also, uh, and I started in history, you know, uh, being young and, and, and seeing your peers doing marketing and, and IR and law and, you know, those were the hype jobs. I was going into history and I was trusting uh, and entrusting myself to the lecturers, to the staff, to the programs. So my experience um, 
to say the least, was wonderful. The lecturers themselves, you can hear the enthusiasm in our moderator. Oh boy. So it looks like, I think, is it slow flow or slow digital that strikes again? Oh boy, when we have to work with, I'm hoping for the day to come when our technology will improve. So we are, we have next on our agenda, Dr. Deborah Hickling Gordon who will talk to us about the exciting careers in the, in the Institute of Caribbean Studies. Dr. Hickling Gordon, over to you. Evening, everybody. How are you all doing? Um, good evening to you from the Institute of Caribbean Studies. And we like to believe that, that we are the most vibrant of all the departments in the faculty. And okay, if we're not the most vibrant, we're certainly the most vibesy. Certainly the most vibesy. I'm Dr. Deborah Hickling Gordon, and um, I did both my undergrad and my um, my graduate studies right here at the University of the West Indies. Both of my degrees were done at um, in the Faculty of Humanities and Education, and I came to came from literatures in English to um, the Institute of Caribbean Studies. And that's an important part of the story. Because what's important about ICS is that you can start in many places. You can start in places, you can start in social sciences. You can start, um, you, can, you can ground yourself in, in a number of, of different areas and you can end up um, studying this, this vibrant thing called culture that invades and is a part of everything that we do. So the ICS is a vibrant space for undergraduate and postgraduate programs. And we are on the cutting edge. Some of the courses that we do are festival and events production, music business management, Caribbean fashion, Caribbean film, dance hall, culture, entertainment, media and culture, and public relations. So you must be saying, but I've heard some of these things before this evening. And you're right, because largely, in large part, the Institute of Caribbean Studies does a number of interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary um, courses, which means simply that you can spread your education across a number of departments, a number of faculties, a number of interests, a number of disciplines, and you can end up getting one of the degrees I'm gonna tell you about in a little bit. Our programs allow individuals to take full advantage of not only the financial rewards, we talk a lot about the financial rewards, but there are lots of social, cultural, um, intellectual rewards available um, in the culture, entertainment, and creative industries. We talk also about this thing that we call the creative economy. Come to ICS and you'll learn all about it. It's a growing multi-trillion dollar sector. Did I say trillion? Yep, I said trillion with a wide range of industries, sectors, and jobs. Um, music, visual arts, publishing, performing arts. And again, you heard about these things from the Faculty of Humanities. So you can, and, and there, there is a way that you can touch all the interests that you have, or, or many of them, within a structure, of course. Because we do believe in structure at the ICS. Shh, yes, we do focus on entertainment management. You know, some of those things that go on behind the scene, the sound, the light sound stage when they're putting up those things and, 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 and the management of that process. There's a whole process that happens before the performance happens. And those are some of the things that we talk about in the Institute of, of um, Caribbean Studies. We're also into the issue of honing musical performance digit and, and the making of digital music. Did I say cutting edge? Absolutely, music and performance from the perspective of a digital realm of, of, of making digital music 
in the 21st century. We look, we were involved in event production production through um, courses like producing culture and we, we have a whole set of, of, of courses that we are we're planning to bring on for this particular area heritage tourism so you can also match your 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 interests with the history um, that that dr plummer was talking about and um, issues of heritage uh, that and, and tourism which you, you you get a little piece of that from um, social sciences we also do some of the really serious work um, of managing, planning, and analyzing issues to do with culture and um, the cultural and creative industries, the economic elements, the ideological elements, the, the, those things that have to do with politics and those exciting things that have to do with the philosophy of, 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 of why we do what we do and how we do it. And this is all related to culture and cultural studies and cultural um, and the cultural economy. You're able to literally curate. And when I say curate, you can create your degree, depending on the degree that you, you choose. You can choose bits and pieces from different parts of the university and do a single degree in a structure, of course. And yes, we do believe in structure. Cultural studies is in another area. Cultural studies helps us to analyze the um, issues of power and issues of the political cut and thrust of those things that make us who we are in the Caribbean, in our own countries, and of course, in the rest of the world. And we do all of this through three programs that we have in the Institute of Caribbean Studies at the bachelor's level. The first is entertainment need um, and cultural enterprise management. We do a Bachelor of Arts there, and that's where we deal with the management and the coordination and the logistics and the marketing and the um, and the and 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 um, the and what we call creative work. How we plan the processes of doing the work. Then we have the Bachelor of Cultural and Creative Industries. That's where we look at the international relations and the policy. And we look at, at um, some of the planning issues and the ideological and philosophical issues to do with culture and creativity. We're planning for the future. We're not just looking at creating skills in the here and now. We're also planning for the future that you are going to be living in. The, our third Bachelor of Arts is a Music and Performance Studies degree, which is a brand new degree and it, it helps us to make music for um in, in, a, in as i said in the digital realm like for music for for uh, movies and soundtracks um creating digital beats like the one that you're hearing under um this particular presentation did i say we were the most vibes in? trust me we are and we have also our graduate programs the master of arts the Masters of Philosophy and the Doctor of Philosophy in Cultural Studies. And that's where you can use all the information that you would have gathered in your undergraduate and you can create your own um, um, higher degree and, and you can become then the expert in that particular area. But let's start at the beginning. Let's start, let's get you in. Let's get you into the Institute of Caribbean Studies where you can start to create, uh, create and curate your degree. Call us, WhatsApp us, email us, find us on Facebook, find us on Instagram. We're here waiting to um, meet you, to listen to you, to find out what it is that interests you so that we can provide for you the right degree for you. Take care. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Hickling Gordon. I want to go um, just backtrack just a little bit. Mr. Alex Reed was telling us about his experience. Mr. Reed, um, you have a small window to just quickly tell us before your internet um, decides to act up again. And this will be followed by the presentation by Mr. Stephen White on the programs in Carmack. So, Mr. Reed. All right, thank you again, Dr. Plomo. Uh, so, yeah, 
I entered the Faculty of Humanities and Education, started in the Department of History and Archaeology. Uh, the teachers uh, were, the lecturers, sorry, <laughs> were hands-on, they were practical, uh, they, 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 they gave you the time of day, so you, they were approachable, um, they were enthused about what they were doing, they convinced you, just, just as Dr. Palmer is being convinced by all the presenters. I was in a faculty that I was so convinced I wanted to do everything because everybody was so passionate and practical about what they were doing. Uh, I also did a minor in cultural and creative industries. And between history and cultural and creative industries, I explored so many things. Uh, I remember doing a research on architecture, uh, management, uh, tourism management, archaeology itself. Uh, intellectual property rights. So it is a rounded, it is a rounded program. It's a very rounded faculty, and I, 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 I can say that everything that has been said is true. Uh, my former HOD said, "Yes, your mind is your best tool." And in the humanities and education faculty, uh, we are trained to utilize our minds, and not just to follow what's in the book, but to question everything. Uh, to, to, to put our own spin on it, to explore, be creative. Uh, I was able to do that, graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in History and Heritage Studies, and went on to, to work uh, as an educator, as a researcher uh, in the banking uh, uh, sector, like Dr. Plummer herself. So many things, you know, this, 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 this faculty prepares you to be flexible, uh, to be analytical and that is what uh, employers are looking for and if you don't want to work for anybody you are provided with the a wealth of knowledge and intellect and 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 and, and, and reason to go out and and, and and be your own thing so you know i encourage anybody that's listening that still has some doubts about the faculty of humanities and education it is the right choice i followed my instincts and it it, 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 it worked for me I can say that for my colleagues uh, within the Department of History and Archaeology, we're all doing well. So I, I look forward uh, to seeing some of you and uh, I look forward to your successes. Thank you, Dr. Plummer. All right, thank you so much, um, Alex. Thank you very much. We're going to have a presentation by Mr. Stefan Campbell, not Mr. Stefan White, Mr. Stefan Campbell from Karma. This will be followed by Ms. Kimaja Connell, and then we will have St. Michael's Theological College. We will end on a powerful note and a link with the Almighty. All right then, so here we go. Mr. Campbell and Karma. Thank you. Dr. Plummer. Well, right now, I want to talk specifically to that person who has several YouTube videos loaded up to look at right after this. Right now, I want to talk to that aspiring journalist eager to advance or, or, or release the next big story. Right now, I'm talking to the next Olivia Pope who can manage PR crisis unlike any other person. We at the Caribbean School of Media and Communication are the home of pandemic proof degrees. And this is done through the practical degrees that we offer in media and communication delivered by a diverse range of professionals with varying backgrounds, varying cultures, varying understandings of historical context. So without a doubt, you are going to get a well-rounded degree and a well-rounded experience here at the School of Media and Communication. Now, those YouTube videos that you have loaded up, I'm sure you're wondering how to edit some of these things. I'm sure you're wondering how to be the next big photographer. We have a space just for you in the BA in Digital Media Production Program. How about advertising? Those pesky, those pesky adver advertisements that you can't seem to get out of your mind, like 15 minutes can save you 15% on your car 
insurance by switching to who? Exactly, Skyco. We can help you create one of these. Or in this era of this pandemic, someone has to manage the health communication that is going out that is telling people that they need to wash their hands, that they need to sanitize, that they need to social distance. Where do you think they learn these things from? In a program like the integrated marketing and communication degree that we offer, or the next big international story on some issue, some scandal. This is where you can get your BA in journalism. And I'm sure one of you right now is loading up your PS4, hoping for the PS5, and looking at this, this, this video game and wondering how, how they get to have so much detail or all the Rick and Morty fans out there, we can help you not just have a career in animation, but change the world. And speaking of changing the world, I know right after this, there is a hefty Netflix session looking at a, a range of movies. Listen, we are here to get you there. You can get a degree in film production and learn all of the skills and techniques to be the next Tarantino. You can produce films just like the one we showed you a while ago. So what do these things have in common? All of these things produce content, produce information that you or a loved one is consuming right at this moment. That's what we mean by pandemic proof. And admission is easy. All we ask is five subjects in grades one to three, including English language, two of which should be at an advanced level. Two K units each at grades one to five, but we are very strong on having a strong grade in English, and I'm sure you do. How about the person who seeks to advance their career, who wants to go from lower level to management level, or the person who wants to advance theories and analysis and research? There are a range of graduate degree programs that we have for you. There is the MA in communication for social and behavior change. There's the MA in communication studies, the MA in integrated marketing communication, in media management for those already in the media industry or is seeking to enhance their place and, and their position in this organization. And also the MPhil in communication studies and the PhD in communication studies. And after you've done all the work at the undergraduate level from a, a recognized university, just like the University of the West Indies, you can be admitted into a graduate program right, or any other academic or professional qualification that we deem to be the equivalent. We are Caramac, and I'm sure after this presentation, I'm sure after this roadshow, you will be too. So come get a pandemic-proof degree to lead to a pandemic-proof career and change the world. You can contact us at ue.mona.edu slash caramac or caramac at uemona.edu.jm or 876-977-2111. You can follow us on Facebook and keep in touch with us on Instagram. I hope to see you soon. Listen, I see caramac just really into the production, the production quality. Mr. Campbell, as we would say, sell off. Now we have Miss Kimaja, Miss Kimaja Connell. Now Miss Connell had a little technical difficulty, but she's back ready and rearing to present. Miss Connell, you're up now from the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy. Good night, everyone. So happy to be with all of you today. I'm Kimaha Connell, 
and I am in the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy. I'm happy to say that I'm a proud graduate of the Faculty of Humanities and Education and this department where I am also uh, on faculty. Um, I'll share with you that I am also on the Bioethics Committee and I sit on two boards, uh, Social Enterprise, which deals with uh, developing, helping business to develop, um, helping community-based businesses to develop in the tourist resort of Negril. And I also sit on the board of a private enterprise, which as, um, deals with uh, production, distribution, and packaging. So I say that to give you an idea of the flexibility that a graduate from the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy has and is able to apply to uh, society. So the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy is known as a mega department. And every student uh, who, who passes through the gates of the university uh, comes into contact with this department. Um, there are several sections and units in the department, and I'll begin with the language section. The language section offers uh, the university's uh, critical reading and writing courses. So you'll find them as uh, the foundation courses, and those are the courses that all students at UE take. They don't offer a undergraduate degree program, but they offer the MA in, language, uh, in English language. Then there is the linguistics section and the linguistics section offers a number of BA degrees. They offer the BA in linguistics, language the, the, the BA in language communication and society, BA in linguistics, and language education, BA, BA in sign language interpreting, uh, or the diploma rather. And there is also the minor in Jamaican language public service interpreting um, that is offered by the section. Then there is the philosophy section, which I am a part of. And the philosophy section offers a, a BA in philosophy. The other sections in the department, the other units in the department is the Jamaica language unit, the English language proficiency test unit, ELPTU, and the international English language testing system, E-I-E-L-T-S. -E Who are we as the Department of Language Linguistics and philosophy. As a department, we are a future oriented department. That is, we plan not just for today, but we're constantly looking to how we are creating value for tomorrow. We are human-centered. Our programs maximize our students' human ability to think, create, communicate, and to ultimately develop themselves and contribute to the development of society. Maybe you don't readily make the connection with the role that language plays in development. Well, in linguistics, you get a chance to appreciate the fundamental social and behavioral role that language play in society. And you'll also appreciate the urgent need for there to be more individuals who study and build an understanding of language construction and variations and use of language. We are reinforcers of the value of humanity. In philosophy, we tackle the big questions. You know, with the rapid change in technology, 
Um, you know, you see it happening in all sectors of society. And with this ad technological advancement, no more than ever, we can see the value of human beings. In philosophy, we tackle these big questions. We're Many of us find ourselves asking these big questions nowadays. What is the meaning of life and existence? Behind my title, behind my job, behind the demands of my family and the demands of life, who am I? How do I construct a society that serves us better, uh, better than the current um, system that we have right now? How do we begin to address the mounting issues of data use and data rights? The philosophers are in high demand whenever there are times of uncertainty and times of transformation. We are able to speculate and to apply uh, theories, ideas, concepts that have stood the test of time. What do we do as a department? We identify and respond to human needs. And human needs are, you know, the desire we have for meaning or yearning for connection with others. We want to feel at home in our world. We want to feel useful. We want to maximize our output by cultivating our capabilities. We want to safeguard or value, we want to safeguard our human value. So I did some research in preparing for this, this uh, presentation. Of course, I know the value. I have ideas from my own experience about what the department uh, offers, the, the skills that the department offers. And I needed to see, you know, if it match um, the demand, those, the, the, those demands that exist for a, a new skill set. So I found this article on, on Forbes, uh, which listed the eight, the top eight jobs skill sets to succeed in a post coronavirus world. So this department will be preparing our graduates for the future because the skill sets that are required in the future are skill sets that you will de develop in the department as well as the faculty of humanities and education in general these skill sets are critical thinking adaptability and flexibility creativity and innovation leadership emotional intelligence the other three tech savviness we don't teach that directly in the department but indirectly some of the skill sets you'll be able to utilize um, in that area. Data literacy is not directly taught, but some of the skills can be applied in that area. And data coding skills are in high demand. We don't offer that directly. But again, the skill set that you will develop in the department can be applied in these areas. The Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy encourages its students to become committed to a life of learning. The environment is constantly changing and within, within a constantly changing environment, we must be able to adapt, to be flexible and to adapt and to apply our, our skills to the society. To get more information on the department or the programs that are offered in the department, you may email us at langlingphil at gmail.com or telephone number is 927-1641 or you can get in contact with me directly. My email address is kimaha.connell at uimono.org edu.jm and I also give you my cell number if you need to contact me by WhatsApp. Thank you.
No, I don't know if it is the universe telling us something. Because Kimaja, you were supposed to go earlier and then um, Carmack, and then you would have uh, St. Michael's Theological College and UTC. Now, incidentally, isn't it interesting that we're going from ethics right into spirituality? If you wanted, when you think of ethics, I'm thinking the ethics of computers, the ethics of politics. And now we also have to think about ethics and spirituality. So we have now with us, Miss Caroline Chambers, who will talk to us about programs in the St. Michael's Theological College and the United Theological College. So Miss Caroline Chambers. Good evening, everyone. My name is Caroline Chambers and I am the registrar at St. Michael's Seminary and Theological College. Uh, this evening, I will be speaking to you about what we offer in conjunction with the University of the West Indies Mona campus. So um, unfortunately, the United Theological College representative isn't here with us this evening, but pretty much they also offer similar a similar degree to what we offer. Um, so the program that we offer is a BA in theology, which falls under the Faculty of Humanities and Education. It is a great choice for those who want to learn more about their Catholic faith. If you decide that you want to attend the United Theological College of the West Indies, uh, they also deal with, have, they, sorry, they also offer a BA in theology and you are able to learn more about your faith from other denominations, uh, whether it be Pentecostal or Methodist and so on and so forth. For those of you that may not know, theology is defined as a study of religion. It allows those who study it to examine the human experience of faith and how different people and cultures express it. Here at St. Michael's, we study theology through the lens of the Catholic Church and explore it through philosophy, history, and religious courses. Now, persons are always interested in what career opportunities uh, someone that has a degree in theology um, can apply for. So as you see on the screen, here are some of the career opportunities that are available to persons with a BA in theology. Of course, you can become a priest, a deacon, a nun, youth counselor, pastoral worker, instructor or educator, a social worker, hospital chaplain, church office administrator, archivist, international aid worker, community development worker, mediator, and missionary worker. Uh, one of the opportunities that I was asked about recently was about becoming a youth counselor. No, I know that's not the first thing that people will associate theology with. However, having that degree can help you to achieve a goal of becoming a youth counselor. Now, one of the main benefits of becoming a youth counselor is that, is that you will be improving the lives of others. It can be a rewarding experience because there will always, and I'll stress always, be a need to care for, nurture, and advise young people on how best to tackle challenges they face on a daily basis. Now that the entire world is experiencing this COVID-19 pandemic, there will be an even greater need for youth counselors globally. Our youth, especially our youth in Jamaica, are now having to deal with transitioning from face-to-face -face learning to being taught online via smartphones, tablets, laptops, or desktop computers. Unfortunately, some of these same students, because they have to be home now, they may be dealing with physical, mental, and even sexual abuse. Also, some may be going hungry because the schools are physically closed and that may have been their only regular source of food. So in general, it is a challenging time for us and our global neighbors. However, this is a time for us to come together in unity and help one another cope in a safe and caring manner. Help your neighbor. Of course, the Catholic Church has a need for more priests and more nuns. However, because of the pandemic, there will also be a need for more international aid workers to help other countries that may be suffering from COVID-19 or other pandemics. Um, 
and more hospital chaplains to pray for and with the families who are adversely affected by COVID-19. I will be happy to discuss these and the remaining opportunities with you afterwards or at another time convenient to you. And I'm gonna give you my contact information. Again, I am the registrar and my name is Caroline Chambers. I have two email addresses. You can email me at Gmail, which is Dean STMTC 2012 or Caroline.chambers at uemona.edu.jm. And no, that's not a spelling error. That's how my email was created when I started. Um, the telephone number 876 927 1259. Of course, you can visit our website at www.stmtc. Dot edu dot jm. You can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash STMTC Jamaica. You can also reach out to our Dean of Studies, the Reverend Peter Espute, who also happens to be an archivist for the Archdiocese of Kingston. His email is pespute at gmail.com. And finally, our director, Father Walter Dorsey, wldorsey at gmail.com. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or if you are interested in pursuing a Bachelor of Arts in Theology in the near future or tomorrow. Uh, God bless you all and keep safe and wear your mask. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Chambers. It's a timely reminder that we must wear a mask. In fact, I go nowhere without my um, bag with mask and Lysol spray and alcohol and hand sanitizer and what else? Yeah, um, natural hand sanitizer and wet wipes. It's a crazy time. No longer does our, um, do our handbags have makeup, lipstick and so on. Instead, they're filled with COVID fighting in, um, items. So we have come to an end of our program. I hope you had a wonderful journey with us. This is a work road show after all. We walked you through introduction. We walked you through excellent presentations. We had a few technical hiccups, but you know, slow flow and thing, or it could be slow digital and thing, but we made it, we made it to the end. Thank you audience for being with us. This is a reminder that our programs circling in semester one, they are online. If you want to join us for semester one, please apply no. If you want to join us for semester two, please apply no. The portal for applications for this academic year closes next week, Friday. So you have up to next week, Friday, to apply if you want to get into the Faculty of Humanities and Education this academic year. We are the only faculty that is open for application and admissions. We are very flexible. If you even have one unit of um, CAPE or you only have CSE, you can enter part-time. You will take uh, four years to complete your degree rather than three, but you can do it. You will do it. And we are here to embrace you and to help you and we have no doubt you're going to get a first class honors and who knows you might go on Alex's journey and be pursue your masters and who knows you maybe you're doing your PhD so I look forward to seeing you and one of the things before I leave let me just share very quickly um, my PowerPoint presentation the section with the contact information reach out to us at recruiting reach out to us via our website web page via our whatsapp we look forward to welcoming you to our faculty i want to go ahead and just end on a note of note of gratitude i want to thank mr peter watson our technician that made this possible you notice how smooth everything went this evening thank mr watson I want to thank our moderators, both on Facebook and YouTube.
I'm sure that if you had any questions, if you had any concerns, they were there to address them. So thank you very much, moderators. Presenters, you make, you brought us on a wonderful journey. I mean, I'm still so excited. I can be anything. I can do anything. You know how powerful that is? In this age of flexibility, we need critical thinking, communication. You need collaborative skills. You can be anything. And that is what I got from this presentation. I mean, my spirit was filled, my belly was filled, my mind was filled. I want to also thank the team from Marketing and Communication. I want to thank Mrs. Horton. I want to thank Mr. Murray, Ms. Taylor, Ms. Brown. I want to thank Miss Michaela Hutchinson. Miss Hutchinson, just listen, that young lady will work. So for those of you, do not forget to participate in the survey. Miss Hutchinson posted that survey. This survey is just to ensure that you, and you had as much fun on, that, on this experience as we did. So please let us know how you felt about uh, our event this evening. I want to also thank Miss Nicole Edwards, Mr. Carlington Forrest, Miss Sophia Hills Johnson. I want to especially thank our Dean for the Faculty of Humanities and Education, Dean Y. Binti Warboko. Professor Warboko's visionary leadership is why we're here today. I want to thank Miss Camille Reed, Miss Renee McKenzie, without whom we would have gotten almost no publicity. Your Assistance, your help is truly appreciated. Thank you audience for being with us. And I really hope that you're as excited and as pumped and as nerdy and happy as I am. Have a wonderful night and thank you for joining us.